Gibson of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Speed Gibson, Clint Barlow, his uncle and ace operator of the International Secret Police, and Barney Dunlap, Clint's aide, have come to Hong Kong, China, determined to end the criminal career of the notorious bad man, the Octopus. During the trip over on the China Clipper, the boys became acquainted with Marsha Winfield, who is also looking for the Octopus, since she holds him and his organization directly responsible for the disappearance of her brother two years previously. For a guide... She has a barely legible map that her brother sent her in a last letter indicating the headquarters of the evil band. Clint has made a copy of this. And now, on the morning of their second day in China, we find Speed, Clint, and Barney entering a tiny tea shop combined with a tea room. They seat themselves at one of the tables. Gee, listen to that music. Is that Chinese swing time, Clint? <laughs> I guess so, Steve. How come they have an orchestra playing at 9 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> well, you forget you're living in a modern age, my friend. That music comes from a record. <laughs> and it can go back there for all I care. <laughs> so wait a second. Let's listen to it. <laughs> They got the gong. <laughs> it serves them right. Oh, we can't kick, Barney. American jazz probably sounds just as bad to the Chinese as their music does to us. <laughs> no, Speed. Jazz is very popular over here in the nightclub. Oh, but uh, here comes the owner of the tea house. We better decide what we'll order. <clears throat> well, you want a Chinese breakfast, Speed? Mm, no. Not after the bacon and eggs I had at seven. I'll just have a glass of milk. Wouldn't you know he'd come to a tea house to order milk? <laughs> he couldn't order anything better. And since you're such an authority on tea houses, Barney One Long Hop, <laughs> what are you having? Knowing what these breakfasts are made up of, I'll just have tea. And what do you mean, One Long Hop? Oh, huh? should I have said uh, One Loud Noise? <laughs> <laughs> See, what is this? A tea house, gentlemen. Uh, will you be pleased to order? <laughs> <laughs> well, all your questions are answered, Barney. It's a plot. I'm always the fall guy, even in China. Is anything wrong, gentlemen? (laughs) No, no, just this guy. Let's see now. Uh, One glass of milk and two pots of tea, please. Oh, you might bring some of those rice cakes with the fortunes in them. Oh, yeah. I like those things. Very well. And uh, what kind of tea would you gentlemen prefer? Well, what kind have you got? Many kinds. Uh, perhaps you would like to choose for yourself. Say, that would be interesting. Uh, wouldn't you like to see the storeroom, Speed? You bet. I want to see everything I can while I'm in China. If you will be pleased to follow me, then. My, certainly. You do a pretty good business for so early in the morning, my friend. Why, yes. I do good business all morning. Most of my countrymen have breakfast at uh, 11 o'clock, but uh, many tourists come early, like you. Kind of dark back here, isn't it? Well, it's not much farther to the tea storeroom, young gentleman. One good thing about this, we're getting out of hearing distance of that music. Well, here we are now. Uh, Will you be pleased to go through this door? Mmm, sure smells good in here. Mm, That's the fragrance of the tea leaves, Speed. Hey, look. This case is marked chrysanthemum tea. They drink flowers over here. Well, now this is better. Well, it's good to be able to talk to you in person, Ying. Why, well, yes, I was sorry I could not meet you when you arrived on the clipper yesterday. I was out on urgent business. Who is the boy? Oh, it's my nephew, Speed Gibson. And just before we left, Chief Riley swore him into the International Secret Police. Speed, this is your fellow operator, Lee Ying, our Hong Kong representative. Very happy to meet you, my young friend. And it's uh, good to see you again, Barney. Last time we met was in San Francisco. One of your New Year's celebrations. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, but we're not over here for any celebrating now, Li Yang. No. Uh, how did you hurt your arm, Clint? <laughs> the calling card from the octopus, Ying. A dragon knife was thrown at my heart. It got me in the arm. Oh, a dragon knife. Uh, very fortunate it missed. 
I'll say. The blade looked a foot long. Uh, just a flesh wound, though. Dr. Kingsley fixed me up right away. Dr. Kingsley. Oh, yes, we can count him on our side. Mm, I was sure of that, but I'm glad you're verifying it. While we were there last night, somebody ransacked our room at the Golden Lotus Hotel. Oh. The octopus is most anxious to get you all out of the way. He would give a great deal to find the key to your code, too. Of course, you'll realize that every message you send is carefully read by him. The ones to Mademoiselle Fifi at the hat box, too? He knows that Fifi is Chief Riley, just as he knew you to be the secret police in spite of your disguises. But he cannot decipher your code, uh, our code. That is the one thing we can keep from him. Uh, what have your men found out since the last information you sent Chief Riley, Ying? Very little. He has been particularly careful since he learned that you, Clint, had been sent out after him. You are the one man in all the world he fears. I hope to make that fear a reality. I'm out to get him. It's the last thing I do. Oh, yes, but you will have to walk carefully. The octopus is very powerful here in China. In all of China. Even as far as Tibet and Mongolia. Tibet? Wasn't that where that oil company that Marsh's brother was engineering for was going to operate, Clint? Uh, yes. Uh, have you ever heard the name uh, Winfield, Ying? Winfield? No. No, no, but uh, you say he was an engineer with an oil company that was going to operate in Tibet? Yeah. He was in charge of the surveying or something like that. I remember such a company. They uh, started operations about three years ago. Yeah, what became of them? They failed. I do not know why, for they had plenty of capital to start with and were going to uh, go ahead fast, it seemed, when suddenly they shut their doors. And the octopus is powerful in Tibet? Oh, very. I think I smell a rat. Very much of a rat. Evidently, the octopus is not confining himself to smuggling alone, but dabbles in oil development as well. I bet he kidnapped Miss Marsh's brother and is making him work for him on that oil stuff. Very probably. Uh, what's the business at hand, Ying? Uh, we'd better not stay in here. Your customers will wonder why. And if an octopus spies among them, he'll suspect something. They're not wise that you're a member of the secret police, Ying? Oh, by the honor of my ancestors, no. They think me a very simple tea merchant. That is why I know they are smuggling slaves tonight in a flower boat down the Siang River. What's that? The Siang River? Yes, I heard two of the band speaking of it over their tea. The boat is due at nine. If you will dine here tonight, I will supply you Chinese clothes so that you can mingle with the crowd at the docks unnoticed. Yes, and I can put a Chinese makeup on myself, Speed and Barney, to make doubly sure. Be here at seven. The others will also have gathered here at that time. How many men are going tonight, Ying? Ten, besides ourselves. Yes, uh, ten good men. That will be enough. Any police? I believe it's best that the Hong Kong police know nothing of this until we turn our prisoners in at the station. By secrecy, we might be led to the octopus himself. You're right, Ying. We'll be here at seven, ready to go. And uh, now let's go back out in the front of the store. Oh, wait a minute, Clint. What brand of tea did you choose? Uh, what's that? Well, that's why you were supposed to come here in the first place, wasn't it? To choose your tea? <laughs> Oh, the kids got you, Clint. <laughs> well, that's a nice word, Speed. You've got a good memory for small but important details. Oh, just pick up a package of that uh, oolong and then we'll be safe. Okay, I've got it. Hmm, the music stopped. Must be changing the record. Well, I uh, hope that this oolong lives up to its reputation. It will, gentlemen. Oolong is one of the best teas I have. And don't forget my milk, will you? No, young gentleman. If you will go over to your table now and make yourselves comfortable, I will prepare the tea. If you want to make us real happy, don't play any more of that music. Oh, now listen, after all, Mug, we're not the only people in this tea house. Maybe some of the other customers would like to hear that melody. Yeah, sure. Some more have come in since we went to pick out your tea, Clint. Well, here's our table. Looks like we got our fortune cakes already. Three little rice cakes. Oh, swell. Now sit down. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's open the rice cakes, huh? <laughs> All right. Help pass the time while we're waiting for our order. <laughs> hey, listen to mine. You will have success as you desire. That's all right, kid. Let's see what my fortune is. <laughs> this is a hot one. Find a good partner and you will succeed. 
That lets you out, Clint, old boy, old boy. Oh, oh yeah? Well, if that's the way you feel about me, tell that rice cake to pay the check. Hey, I haven't said a word. <laughs> What's your fortune? <laughs> well, let's see now. Hold on. There's something up. What, Clint? This isn't a regular rice cake fortune. Listen to what it says. Telephone Dr. Kingsley's house and learn what has happened to your friend, Marsha Winfield. The octopus. Somebody slipped a phony rice cake in with these other two. Somebody right here in this tea house. That's why they were waiting on our table. They must have followed us here. Quick, where's the phone? Right here. If they pulled any rough stuff with that girl, I'll... Take it easy, fella. Oh, hello. Hello, operator. Get me uh, Dr. Kingsley's home. It's 14 Lang Sue Road. Right away. Uh, yes, yes, I'll wait. Is there any sort of a name on that note, Clint? Sign in it, I mean? No, there's another thing. Uh, oh, hello. Hello. Let me speak, speak to the doctor, please. Oh, is this you, doctor? Clint Marlowe speaking. Uh, what's that? She has. We'll be right over. Yes, goodbye, sir. What's up? Marsha's disappeared. Kidnapped? Yeah, it looks that way. They discovered her absence when she didn't come down for breakfast. They've been trying to reach us at the hotel. Come on, boys. We've got to find that girl. Thank <laughs> you.